Welcome to the 30th Ilga World Conference. Bienvenidos, bienvenidas, bienvenidos a la Conferencia Mundial de Ilga. Lo logramos. We made it. Hubo muchos momentos en los que pensamos que no lo íbamos a lograr. Muchos momentos. Yo quiero agradecer a cada uno, cada una, cada uno de ustedes por estar aquí. Despite the difficulties in organizing a gathering during a global pandemic, you are here and to the city of Long Beach. To the city of Long Beach and this and, and it gets better. And our sponsors, thank you for opening your doors, your arms and your hearts to my Ilga Will family, to our Ilga Will family. We hope in the next week, in this week, you get to learn, you get to love, and you get to dance and glow on the rainbow euphoria that we all carry in our hearts for those family members who are not here with us. We have so much work to do to ensure that the next generation of queer people have the authority and confidence to pick up where we will ultimately leave off. And I cannot wait to connect with each and every one of you by coming together for a little bit of celebration. Every single night this week, the It Gets Better Project has put together a really cool slate of activities for you. We hope you enjoy that. My predominant um, experience at the conference is an experience of bonding, sharing, um, and engaging with others in real life. In a certain way, this conference feels like rain after drought. Volver a, a juntarse y volver a vernos a la cara ha sido muy importante, sobre todo porque hemos estado dos años mirándonos a través de pantallas y, y volver a saber que la gente con la que estamos intentando cambiar el mundo existe y es de verdad es muy importante. It has brought together so many activists from around the world who have so much knowledge and um, expertise to share with everybody as well as the work that they're doing so it's been wonderful to finally come back after a uh, you know a break due to covid con honestidad ha sido un poco complicado ajustarme a algo presencial y con tantas personas y con tantos activistas LGTB comparado a todos los eventos en los que he podido estar durante la pandemia que han tenido un carácter digital. Entonces, realmente poder volver a conectar, mirar a los ojos a alguien, poder saludar, abrazar a alguna persona y hablar de nuestras experiencias ya cara a cara y, y ver cómo se siente la otra persona, ¿no? Tener ese, ese, ese tacto, la parte emocional, creo que ha sido muy abrumador, pero por otro lado también de mucho aprendizaje. The pandemic has impacted our communities in so many different ways, in particular those who have, don't have access to the internet. And so it's very important so that this conference happened and it happened and it was able to happen. Let's also not forget that, it was able to happen. Estamos con las herramientas en un contexto de pandemia, con mejores herramientas en un contexto de pandemia, en un contexto de guerra. Y, y la verdad es que en ese sentido creo que Son conversaciones y discusiones y planteos que se pueden fortalecer cuando, cuando nos encontramos. Así que realmente es, es importante y fundamental encontrarnos con todos. Even before this multiple crisis, LGBTI people have been sidelined or invisible on national, regional, and international level. And quite often, uh, we've seen them really having no voice. Across the world, we know that wide range of violent harmful practices are still faced by queer young people. They face discrimination aimed at their bodies, rights, identities, and lives such as the unethical, non-consensual, medical unnecessary surgeries performed on intersex children and youth. I think for me it was beautiful also to see how much the intersex movement has grown over the years and how powerful it was to have a session that was hybrid and so many people attending, so many intersex folks attending from their countries and 
awake in hours that are very you know late for them or early for them just to be able to be with us um, during that session so it was very impressive. We're learning from different perspectives, different identities, um, different uh, you know laws and legislations and all of that and it's an opportunity just in the first day to, to learn from each other. Well this experience has been solamente increíble. Um, lo que más resalto es la oportunidad de hacer conexiones con personas que trabajan en temas similares alrededor de todo el mundo. Creo que es el espacio que nos otorgan para justamente darnos la oportunidad de conocernos y de establecer vínculos que más adelante puedan ser muy importantes en nuestro trabajo de activismo, me parece fabuloso. Que el networking que ofrece una, una conferencia como la que organiza ILGA es una oportunidad única para traer tu trabajo, pero sobre todo para conocer las realidades que hay alrededor del mundo y especializarte un poco más no solamente en lo tuyo local, sino cómo desde lo tuyo local puedes impactar y ayudar a lo global. Being able to see all these, you know, um, human rights defenders together in one place just gives you a sense of, you know, empowerment. It just gives you a sense of hope that with this many people fighting for our rights, it's got to go somewhere, you know, and it's, it's really encouraging to see. I feel what I have acquired from here is going to be used as a tool of advocacy when I meet up with my fellow colleagues back home. A lot of the young feminists that we get to work with are straight from the get-go open to actually learning from the past. They're open to seeing. They're open to reflecting on histories. They're not afraid of the mistakes that have been made and the mistakes that they are going to make. Um, and we will make mistakes, and we always have, um, but it's made us stronger, and it makes coming together better because we're all doing it. <laughs>
because it's the only thing that actually makes our journey worthwhile is if we are together. In that quest, you know that you have always the support and the accompaniment of the extraordinary office that you create. A deeply institutional office. A space that perhaps at some point needs to be disrupted by somebody who's ready to disrupt it. Until such time, you have me in it. And I'm so happy to be in this journey with you. Go back home and let's continue spreading the light that we have created together these days. Thank you so much. Después de, de años de mucho aislamiento de los activismos globales, el poder no tocar, abrazar, ver a los ojos, compartir, llorar, sonreír, recordar, eh, nos ha hecho a muchas personas, y me crece que no soy la única, que, que puede eh, volver a encontrar una razón en el activismo, es decir, ponerle rostro a eso por lo que tanto nos esforzamos. Particularmente yo me siento necesidad a pesar del jet lag, pero prefiero dormir solamente tres horas que perderme conversaciones, que no estar eh, con las compañeras de tantas partes del mundo que el abrazo estuvo detenido durante tanto tiempo. As indicated, um, we are the bedding organizations um, from South Africa, Iranti, and of course, Gender Dynamics. So the reason why we believe um, that we are a good country, a good city to be able to host this particular convening, it's been two decades plus since the last conference was held in Africa. And when it was held in 1999, it was also the only time that it was held on the African continent. And so. Our ask is, can we bring the conference back to Africa? Discovering the bits of the other cities uh, and coming here and talking uh, to a great many of you, if not all of you, um, we came to the conclusion uh, yesterday evening that um, I think it would serve uh, our movement most if the conference next time would go to the African continent. <laughs> Sería un honor albergar la próxima conferencia, pero queremos anunciarles que hemos decidido retirar nuestra nominación y apoyar la postulación de Sudáfrica como sede de nuestro próximo encuentro, el Congreso de Solidaridad y el Mandato en África. Así que queremos que la conferencia sea en The result of the election for the host organization of the Next World Conference. The result is Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah.